This right here is the start of the show. This upper started off as a Palmetto St. Armory premium line dissipator. Now just for those who may not know, a dissipator is basically either a mid-length or carbine length gas system. But it has a A2 front sight post, which is just a Fox sight post. And um, it's pinned in there. So the whole purpose of the dissipator, to keep it simple, is to have a rifle lift iron sight system on a 16 inch barrel. So it started off as that, but now it's free floated. The barrel is uh, Palmetto State Armory's FN chrome line machine gun steel forge upper sitting on top of a forge lower with a, I think this is that enhanced polished trigger. It's not the two states nickel boron trigger, I know that. So this, this is that EPT trigger. Talking about triggers, guess, guess what trigger going to go inside this rifle? Where that box at right here? I'm going to get me another one of these LaRue triggers and I'm going to drop that inside here. So, in the bottom right hand corner, I have actually what I'm going to do in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to put a video in there. Because we're going to talk about this one for a minute because I got a whole new respect for this rifle. We're going to talk about this one in depth. Because of them Thompson life-size targets, I was finally able to stretch this out to 200 yards. And what I did at 200 yards with this Vortex Spitfire 1X Prism Scope, the best, the best 1X optic on the market. I lied to you not. Of course y'all know I'm not sponsored by nobody at all. So I don't have a reason to sit here and tell you something's good if it's not. That Vortex Spitfire 1X Prism Scope... I love it. Etch reticle. If you wear glasses, this is for you. You don't have to worry about that bloom or that starburst from a red dot. You don't have to go out there and spend money on a holographic site and not like that. This right here is the way that you should go. Etch reticle. Just so, just like a scope, you're always going to have a reticle. You got illumination, which is enough for nighttime because it's an etch reticle like you really don't need daylight illumination that's more for like a red dot type of thing for like a etch reticle you don't really need daylight bright because that black reticle is more than enough visible in daytime i got the palmetto say army top of the line um this is their uh desert tan boat carrier so this is their top of the line 200 hundred dollar boat carrier right here also, uh, we got the Strike Industries Venom Flash Hider with the Oppressor Blast Forwarding Device. I'm going to tell y'all something about this right here. I haven't never heard nobody mention this, but I'm going to mention it now. With a three-prong or four-prong flash hider, your gases come out, you know what I'm saying, like at odd angles. Which can change from each round of ammunition. So your recoil impulse is a little bit more unpredictable with a three-prong, four-prong flash hider, in my opinion. Compared to like a muzzle brake or an A2 flash hider. With like a three-prong or four-prong flash hider, your recoil impulse is a little bit more unpredictable. But with this blast diffusing device from um, Strike Industries... When you attach that to the front of there, your recoil impulse, if it, it changes and it just straight back. It just straight back. That's how I was able to shoot them groupings so fast yesterday and basically still be able to hit combat effective groupings at 200 yards. It's because the recoil impulse with this blast forwarding device pushes the rifle straight back. Plus, I got spring co springs in here, which dampens that straight pushback that you get. So it's really like no recoil at all. You can really like stay on target. So as far as muzzle devices go, I think the best muzzle device setup for all around duty purposes would be the Strike Industries Venom Flash Hider with their oppressor muzzle device on there. Because it gives you that recoil impulse, especially if you want some spring coat, spring coat springs and the proper buffer weight to even everything out. Man, it makes that fucking rifle shoot so flat. I'm telling you, man, I was just banging them shits down at 200 yards like it was nothing. 
Because the rifle would just come straight back, straight forward. Straight back, straight forward. Like, I am really fucking impressed with this setup right here. And I would have never known that I could stretch it out to 200 yards if I wouldn't have had them Thompson targets which allowed me to be able to see the target at 200 yards. So, that's why y'all want to keep seeing me hop on these damn targets because you'll be able to stretch some of your 1X optic stuff out to 200 yards and you'll be like, damn, I didn't kind of realize I can stretch this 1X optic out to 200 yards like this because I can actually see the target and see where I need to hold for center mass versus trying to find this little red dot at 200 yards. Man, that's hard as hell compared to just looking at a target like this. Seeing the shoulders going in between there and just knowing that, you know what I'm saying? Plus, you can see that big, that right there, you can see that at 200 yards. I can actually kind of see my reticle right there. So that's why them groupings were like that at 200 yards. So all that combined just kind of made this my favorite right here. Like, this is my favorite. I don't know why I still got this on here for. I don't even have the front one on there, too. I think I'm going to go to the... um. 45 degree sights. These are some good little backup sights too, but I think I'm gonna go 45 degree sights because this is an etched reticle, so other than glass breaking, I don't have to never worry about, you know what I'm saying, losing power because of battery or anything like that, which is another reason why I like prism scopes too, because you don't have to necessarily need a battery. So this is like your shit hit the fan, doomsday little setup right here, because it got an etched reticle. But yeah, man, I'm just. This thing bumped up to my favorite right here. After yesterday being able to stretch that to 200 yards and see what I could do at 200 yards with that, that right there bumped up to my favorite. So the thing that I'm gonna have to do for this is, I'm gonna have to get ammunition that's tailor-made for this rifle. Not saying that the green tip or the 55 grain won't be effective in a 16 inch barrel, but I think in this one right here, I think I'm gonna run 75 grain or 68 grain open tip match ammunition or some kind of hollow point ammunition I'm gonna run that in this rifle right here because like in a 20 inch M16A4 setup you can run regular ass 55 grain M193 full metal jacket ammunition because that bullet is moving so fast out of that barrel that it is guaranteed to yard and fragment which is what you want 556 cartridges to do in a 16 inch barrel, just running regular 55 grain ammunition, losing a lot of velocity. So, even if I was to run some ammunition in here, I might run some 55 grain hollow point ammunition. But more than likely, it'll probably be 75 grain. Because with the groupings that I shot at 200 yards, that'll be a nice little small package right there. Nice little 1X optic, and you can stretch it out to 200 yards. I mean, I'm highly impressed with this setup right here. I really am. I like this. I'm highly impressed with this setup right here. So I just wanted to kind of tell y'all the good of the range day, man. I know I keep harp harping on them targets, but man, they really help me be able to see what I can do with my setups, man. And don't forget about this, too. I think that's a good muzzle device setup. When you're a flash out of the kill flash, you got your blast forging device. That gives you a more predictable recoil impulse. Get you some sprinkle springs to dampen that uh, recoil impulse. You have you a flat shooting rifle. So I was just banging them shits down at 200 yards like it was nothing. That's why I was shooting so fast. I was just getting back on target so fast. Like I really like this little setup right here. And this machine gun still with chrome line barrel too. So it can handle some fast fire. Man y'all better stop sleeping on Paul Mills say Army man. Y'all better go ahead and get that good budget grade, that good budget priced, high quality AR-15 uppers and lowers from Palmetto State Army. I apologize, I messed up on my words then. But that's some good shit, man. I stand by them. But that's it, though, man. I don't want to talk too long, man. I'm just really impressed with this, and I just wanted to tell y'all that this has become my favorite setup right here. Y'all be blessed, be safe, man. I'm out.